Whoa. Brother! Oh. D5! Okay, so I was super excited to watch this mama stage because Yoshiki is one of few celebrities that I follow on Instagram for the reason being that he is a very cool Japanese rock star and also a very cool classical pianist who I first heard about when he went to the 2019 Frost Chopin Summer Festival that my boyfriend was at and he told me all about this very cool man who pulled up in shades and like 10 meter tall heels and proceeded to give a talk on Chopin and like play like a god so like Jeez. i'm really impressed by this guy what you're reacting to now is a stage from mama 2023 where they uh performed in tokyo and this is the stage that is a collaboration between yoshiki uh two members from tomorrow by together one member from boy next door one member from rise and one member from zero base one Anton! and they'll be performing yoshiki's music so let's get it let's get it three two one. Oh, thank you Music goes infinity and beyond. A very profound statement. Profound? Mm, profound. Profound statement. <gasps> Yoshiki! Pachelbel's sequence, okay. <laughs> Whoa. Such luscious locks. He's always like, his styling is always so on point. That piano though, got his oh, name on it on everything. On so clear. He has like this very Japanese pianist flair to it. You know? mm -hmm. Like the way they move is pretty different from other classical pianists, I think. Oh, they got an orchestra in the back? Maybe? He moves a lot like Hiromi, who is a former classical pianist. Yeah. I'm walking in the rain. Oh! I just feel warm when I listen to it, you know? Suspension. Looking like a doctor. A sparkly doctor. <laughs> Oh, they're singing in Japanese. Yeah. I think this is this is one of Yoshiki's songs. Oh. That's why. Hey. It's very like new age piano style, which yeah. you'd expect. Oh, That's secondary doms. Thank you for that. I like the connection between all the performers, you know, like they're all like looking at each other. Yeah. Piano voice included. That's a basic in classical collaboration. Oh, too. high notes. Whoa. Yeah, you need that in a song like this, like just to connect with each other. Unless you're singing that, honey, Jesus. Yeah, then you're just focused on your mic. <laughs> they're hitting a freaking B5, Hello, dude. Hello, that entrance, all that smoke. Is that a B4? That's a B4. Octave doubling. Ooh, voice so deep. <gasps> Yo, cellist out of nowhere? Hello? Wait, that's Anton, right? Wait, that's Anton wait, from he Rise. Plays cello? He plays cello. Whoa! That's insane, dude. That's Anton is crazy. so talented. <gasps> he looks so good oh. doing it too. I don't think I said this. I think, like, I might have chosen him as my bias last week when scrolling through like Rise's stuff. 
Just because he's a cellist? That and like, dude, he's, he's just talented, man. What else does he do? He writes music. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Also, he's just handsome. Intonation! Intonation. Oh. <laughs> Ambiguous tonality. Lydian? Whoa! Oh! D5! <gasps> A dancer! Han Yu Jin. Oh, Whoa. from Zero Baseline. Contemporary He's so dance. flowy, what so the heck? And that costume. It's giving BTS blood, sweat, tears. <laughs> yeah, I see it. Like, both the costume and the movements. <gasps> That's hard, <laughs> the turns he did. I want to see where the other string players Secondary are. Secondary dominant into a suspension, which is so crazy. I love his voice leading in the left hand. <laughs> I like how Yoshiki goes the, the same choreo. Oh. The fans are singing. Mm. Oh. oh. I'm sorry, this reminded me of that scene in the Polar Express where the elves are singing. <laughs> Is cry worthy. Oh, there's a whole choir. Hello? Were they always wearing black? Whoa. Vocal powerhouses, dude. Crisp arpeggio. Dude moves like a Chopin enjoyer. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So cool. Whoa. You guys enjoyed that. <laughs> <it seems. laughs> that was hot. <laughs> I'm rethinking. <laughs> yeah, what was the highlight of the performance for you guys? Anton. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Dude, yes. Cello solos like, like are crazy. An idol. That high in the <laughs> like, register. Yeah. So let's let's analyze that technique. Yeah, sure. Cellist. Or person who has taken lessons on a cello versus <laughs> someone who never has. <laughs> Not a cellist. I only touch it during the summer. His thumb is like out indicating thumb position. Ooh. That run looks very synced. Yeah, because you could hear his fingers like sliding between notes. Yeah. That C sharp. Ba -da -da -da. Oh. Like you can tell Ooh, he practiced that's... that slide up to the D sharp. Um, the C sharp sounded like a little bit flat, but like that to no fault of his own, you know, like naturally that's what it happens on a string instrument. Dude, like... <laughs> like you can tell he practiced that shift, look at that. Oh. Has Anton solidified his bias position for you? 
Yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. period. He's so good. Nothing can knock him off that pedestal oh, now. Literally. I wish there were cellists like that in my school. <laughs> So you guys were also not only paying attention to the live vocals, but it seems the chords of the songwriting as well. Yeah. Um, and this song is definitely a feelsy one. So what about the all those secondary dominants and the sequences help, you know, get this really feelsy well, vibe? Obviously, secondary dominants, like from a theory standpoint, they're made to give you a little bit more edge. What key are we in? Like B major. So secondary dominant, let's say we're going to do a five of five, right? So this is what you're tonicizing, five of five. So it's that two, five, one motion in the bass, two, five, one, sorry, two, five, one. And then um, secondary dominant is basically when you take the dominant, which, so the five in B major is uh, F sharp. Uh, and then you take the five of the five thus creating the secondary dominant. So what this is made to do is like, it's to give you a little bit of edge because the non-chord tone, uh, the F, the third in this secondary dominant, um, is not in the key of... <laughs> I'm not... <laughs> Plays. I have not touched the piano in weeks because finals. Yeah. That's my excuse. But this is not in key, therefore that's why it gives you that little edginess. Yeah, so they do a lot of that throughout the piece. There's also like uh, five to one suspension. Yeah, so you're waiting for that resolution with the third. And they like Yoshiki does a lot of that in his accompaniment. Have you heard this Yoshiki song before? I actually haven't, but something that I feel like was interesting to me was that I feel like I immediately know what it's about. I won't lie, from context clues, like I'm not gonna listen to this and be like, oh, this is about this. But I see a lot of the way this is staged and set up and things in the audience, things on the screen that really make me feel like, oh, this is about this. And like the whole choir thing, the whole chant with everybody of this da 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 it's I, it's like kind of like music as a global language and talking about how it, you know, breaks down borders, unifies people, you know, washes away all of the hate, which I think was the thing that was on the screen. I thought that was cool. I feel like it's a little bit high for the guys to sing. Like, they pulled it off right so Right now, well. they did, they did. It's on a frame of Huning Kai, just like. <laughs> it's paused on. He really got that, that vowel <laughs> like, dang. open. Yeah. yeah, I feel like it's a little bit of an uncomfortable register, which made me feel like it kind of conflicts with the idea of like this is a feel good song oh, <laughs> because yeah. you don't feel good when you're like. Argh. But also, but, you could argue that having that sort of strain adds emotion to emotional the tension delivery. yeah that was yeah. going to be my next point that i feel like that's why it's up there because you feel like it's your heart is so full and spilling over of all of these feelings but i feel like because it stays up there for so long i'm kind of like oh. right <laughs> yeah the entire hook is up there isn't it yeah yeah, basically. yeah. I think it might have something to do with the fact that this is not originally their song and this wasn't written for I mean, them. they have some songs that are up there as well, I feel like. That's true, but like, yeah. this this is kind of special. I but don't... the songs that are up there are like more short-term high notes. Yeah, exactly. Mm, and this is really drawn out. Yeah. yeah. You're up there for a so long time. So it requires time. some serious vocal technique. To Kudos do that on stage, them. on one of the biggest stages in like K-pop? The big stage. Yeah. It's the Mama Awards. It's the Mama Awards. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Tokyo Dome, which is very famous. Yeah. Yeah. Giant, fifty thousand people, something like that. There's like whole manga series about people dreaming of performing at Tokyo Dome. Yeah. You know? I'm still like riding that high of like how high they are in the register. <laughs> it requires like so much like placement plus like vowel manipulation plus like breath control. Like there's so many factors that go into it that I've only discovered this year. Mm -hmm. and it's like it, it's actually insane the amount of technique that's required to like get up there. And that's how rigorous that they train you in the K-pop industry. I don't know, just kudos to them, yeah. all of them.
There's a part that I love so much that I actually like this song a lot. It's just the guy that goes, ooh, baby, ooh. That chorus got me emotional. This screams like extremely fun B-side. Like it feels this, fresh. There's a feeling that all they want to do is to make music that feels good. That's what makes them stand out.